uh, introduce uh, the first speaker. So it gives me a great pleasure to introduce my colleague, Dr. Al Jeffrey. Dr. Al Jeffrey is well known to all of us. He is a senior pediatric hematologist, oncologist, and transplanter at King Faisal Specialist Hospital in Riyadh. Uh, Dr. Jeffrey, uh, he is uh, uh, really uh, uh, a main contributor uh, to the national uh, effort in treating hemoglobinopathies as well as bone marrow failure uh, disorders, especially in stem cell transplantation. So without further ado, uh, uh, Dr. Jeffrey is going to present us today bone marrow failure syndrome. So Dr. Jeffrey, is, uh, the floor is, uh, is yours. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Ali, for the introduction. Uh, today I'm going to talk about inherited bone marrow failure with uh, considerations or special consideration in regards to stem cell transplantations. Uh, I would be reflecting more on the transplant side rather than going in details about the disease uh, category. Uh, we know that the bone marrow failure, especially the inherited bone marrow failures, are heterogeneous uh, uh, group of diseases uh, that are complex in nature, and uh, they are known to have ineffective hematopoiesis and developmental uh, abnormalities, and they have predisposition to cancer. We know that the, the underlying uh, causes genetic mutations uh, that are known, some of them are uh, known for a long time, some of them are being, uh, uh, you know, studied more and more. Uh, and these, these genes import, uh, play an important role in the development, uh, uh, function, and maintenance of the hematopoietic tissue, hematopoietic tissue and the uh, immunological uh, functions. Uh, as you can see in the screen, you know, the, the, the integration of these genes and the overlap among them in playing different roles, as you can see in the immune deficiencies, the pancytopenia, the, the single line cytopenias and dyskeratosis. So really, it's, it's really quite variable when we talk about the uh, clinical and hematological, immunological manifestation. They're really intermingled with autoimmune manifestation. Uh, uh, immune deficiencies and the variable sort of uh, bone marrow failure. And as you can see, the the uh, disease such as uh, dyskeratosis congenita, Fanconi anemia, Babum Lachman and Schwachmann Diamond, as well as congenital uh, uh, neutropenia and uh, new syndromes that are, were described uh, like GATA2, SAMD9, and SAMD9L, and MECOM, like is 4 etc., etc. So we know that the the uh, the curative uh, disease for most of these diseases are uh, stem cell transplantation, and uh, finding a fully matched donor may offer the best outcome in these patients. Uh, however, mismatched donors may be associated with high risk of GBHD rejection and immune abnormalities. Uh, it's very important to make an accurate diagnosis if you are faced with a patient with bone marrow failure. Uh, because that impacts on, on the, uh, the management of these patients, especially if you talk about chemotherapy or transplant. Uh, another important factor is when you screen for potential donor, especially when it's a sibling or related donor. Uh, you need to screen uh, also for the underlying genetic abnormality, especially the molecular diagnosis. Uh, because, uh, you know, the manifestation of disease can, can vary even among family. The hematological or physical uh, manifestation can vary among family. Therefore, it is really uh, important to screen for, for these uh, abnormalities. Uh, the long-term follow-up uh, is important, considering in mind that these patients uh, are prone to develop uh, cancer or prone to develop organ uh, dysfunction. Therefore, it's important to look for the organ function and follow up and screen for cancer. Now, with, with the knowledge of more and more, uh, you know, syndromes like MECOM, which is a, a syndrome known to have bone marrow failure, cardiac, uh, renal, and hearing uh, abnormality together with immune dif dif dysfunction and MDS, etc., etc., uh, SAMD9 is also associated with a variable uh, range of MDS, uh, physical abnormalities, 
uh, immune deficiencies, etc. They're really becoming more and more. We need to learn about them and screen for them, for, especially for family counseling and uh, monitoring of these patients. So what is the special workup we need for these patients? Hematological evaluation is important. It's important to know the disease phase, the clonal evolution uh, for this uh, disease and the cancer screening. Uh, uh, evaluation also may uh, be required for uh, diseases that may involve the renal, cardiac, hepatic, and pulmonary because some of the diseases may either affect these organs in terms of structure or function or even development of fibrosis and progressive disease. Treatment history in these patients are important. Patients, for example, who are, you know, uh, congenital neutropenia or Schwachmann and GCS, it may imply, you know, uh, evolution of disease or development of molecular abnormality or dysplasia. Hormonal therapy, growth hormone and androgens may also cause other uh, complications. And steroids, and we know with the toxicity of steroids, that we need to observe for. Uh, allosensitization, especially in patients on, uh, who are transfusion dependent, uh, needs to be looked uh, into. Uh, the patients who are requiring alternative donor, you need to screen for donor-specific uh, antibodies against HLA. Uh, patients also who are on transfu transfusional uh, dependent, uh, they need to be monitored for iron overload, uh, not only by, by ferritin, but by MRI T2 star of the liver and heart to look for uh, you know iron uh, you know degree of iron load and the need for uh, proper chelation so that they can avoid uh, unnecessarily uh, toxicity of chemotherapy. This is uh, in addition to the other routine uh, workup that we do for the patients that includes the, these following uh, in the investigation. So we'll start with uh, Fanconi anemia because it's probably a common uh, hereditary uh, uh, bone marrow failure uh, disease, and we know it is a bone marrow failure with progressive uh, hemato, uh, uh, hematopoiesis uh, failure, and uh, it is uh, known that they have excessive, to, you know, sensitivity to alkylating agent, and they have chromosomal uh, breakage that is elicited by uh, diepoxybutane or mycomycin C in lab that shows excessive chromosomal breakage, and that really uh, is a diagnostic for this uh, disease. They are also physically characterized by microcephaly, skin pigmentation, skeletal anomalies uh, in the, in the uh, head and neck, in the face, ears, uh, chin, uh, eyes, and in the upper limbs by thumb abnormality and radius, genitourinary anomalies, including ectopic, or horseshoe kidney, you know, uh, hypospadias, et cetera. Uh, short stature, mental retardation, vector association, especially with FANC-D, one or BRCA2 genotype, hearing loss, uh, and 30%, uh, however, may not have physical anomalies. So don't uh, ignore this fact that some of them will not manifest, uh, you know, abnormalities. Uh, we know that these patients may start to develop to, to show the hematological manifestation, although they are born with physical abnormalities, but the hematological manifestation may show a bit uh, late, you know, around the age of uh, four to seven years when they show the hematological evaluation. So you keep track of that. Um, they are predisposed to cancer like leukemia uh, and, you know, the tissues or, of uh, uh, rapidly dividing uh, nature like uh, mouth, esophagus, and uh, others. Uh, as you can see, there, the, the, the development of MDS and AML is known. Therefore, before transplant, they need to be checked on an annual basis. And you can see here the squamous cell carcinoma that they are prone to. Fanconi anemia is caused by 22 genes uh, abnormality involving the FANC uh, constellation or co complementation, as you can see, that are all responsible for DNA uh, repair. So it's, a, it's a really quite quite a big uh, collection of genes. Uh, they are responsible for the uh, genome instability and uh, DNA repair. So they're all uh, complementing each other and they lead 
to chromosomal breakage ultimately. What are the indications for transplant if patient develops the hematological manifestation? And if they show any evidence of clonal uh, evolution, and it's best to transplant these patients once they start receiving blood transfusion and before development of MDS or AML. And we know that these patients are extremely sensitive to chemotherapy because of their impaired uh, ability to repair the DNS. This will lead to increased chemotherapy and radiation toxicity for these patients. Uh, therefore, uh, reduced intensity conditioning is, is used for these patients. And uh, to give you the, the uh, transplant experience, uh, there's a large experience in Brazil with 425 transplants done uh, in these patients using reduced intensity uh, conditioning. Uh, this was done in different uh, types of uh, donors, uh, mud mismatch related and haplo uh, identical. Uh, the, the outcome showed that the, the non-radiation conditioning fares the best and the low dose of cytoxan uh, with fluodarabine and ATG has the best outcome in these trials. As you can see in the graph here, the, uh, the Psi ATG had uh, very good survival. However, combination of Psi flu and ATG with no TBI had the excellent uh, survival, which goes from 80 to 95%. Uh, match unrelated transplant can also be a good source of uh, uh, you know, uh, cells for these patients. Uh, at King Faisal Specialist Hospital uh, here in Riyadh, uh, our experience uh, published by Dr. Ayas uh, in 94 patients, uh, all of them were matched related donor, uh, using uh, may, uh, again reduced intensity in different uh, eras here, started from 1995, started with ATG, total abdominal irradiation, <clears throat> so I, 60 milligram with ATG or Psi, fludarabine, ATG, and incorporating TBI. As you can see, the outcome is best in, the, in these patients who had uh, you know, radiation-free fludarabine-based uh, regimen and inferior in those who had radiation. In fact, some of those who had radiation developed uh, secondary malignancies later on. So the overall survival is, as you can see, over one, five years, follow-up is, is uh, still good in the whole group. However, it's best in the fluodarabine-based regimen with survival 95%. Uh, Six patients developed secondary malignancies, three squamous cell carcinoma, and three acute leukemias. Uh, this is the outcome of transplant done uh, from alternative donor, either much uh, unrelated or mismatched, uh, etc. Uh, most of them uh, utilize fludarabine and ATG, uh, and most of them added uh, TBI to the combination. And as you can see, the best experience was in uh, the, uh, uh, these patients who had uh, incorporated fludarabine and ATG with uh, TBI, such as in our experience at King Faisal, with uh, excellent outcome, in fact. Uh, this is a, our experience with T-cell re replete, uh, haploidentical. That means the, the product is not T-cell depleted, but it's complete uh, T-cell uh, uh, graft. Uh, however, it, uh, the uh, cytoxan is given after the infusion of the graft. Uh, as shown here, as you can see, um, it's, it's given after the graft. Uh, the, what we use is fludarabine. 30 milligram and ATG 5 milligram and TBI 200 milligram. Uh, and uh, this is the reduced dose of cytoxan to avoid toxicity or undue toxicity with 25 milligram in day three and five. And the five year uh, survival was almost 90%. 17 are alive and two died, one of severe graft versus host disease and one of leukemia relapse. What are the factors affecting the outcome in Fanconi anemia? age and clonal evolution. The younger the patient, the better outcome. The older the patient, the highly likely chances that the patient is showing clonal evolution, as you can see here in, in the experience of 199 uh, uh, patients who had 46% had uh, clonal evolution. Um, uh, the three four year overall survival was 36%, and there is a high rate of transplant mortality in this group uh, of patients. However, those who were transplanted after the year 2000, incorporating the fludarabine-based 
conditioning have much better survival than the past. And uh, still the secondary malignancy remained a problem. And as you can see in this uh, group. What about the patient who has still residual uh, disease? We know that these patients cannot tolerate high dose chemotherapy that we used for you know AML patients. So the sequential approach using flag regimen, sequential flag regimen, as you can see here, uh, fared uh, better survival in, in the EBMT. 74 patients uh, were done, uh, 35 with MDS and 35 with leukemia. The five-year-old survival was 42% and the relapse was 40%. Uh, what are the complications after stem cell transplantation of Anconi anemia? Uh, of course, endocrine uh, organ. We know that uh, to start with, these patients have infertility, but other organs that are likely to be affected like the, uh, you know, the growth hormone, thyroid dysfunction, hypogonadism, and uh, pancreas. All males are infer uh, infertile and low infertility in females. As I mentioned, the predisposition for cancer needs to be observed, and it can happen in these patients, especially those who had radiation therapy. So it is advised, uh, you know, the, the, to avoid radiation because it is associated with increased incidence together with severe graft versus disease. As I mentioned earlier, lifelong surveillance of these patients is highly needed. So congenital, uh, the, this, sorry, dyskeratosis congenita is again a, a, another uh, syndromic disease with cutaneous manifestation like leukoplakia, or reticular hyperpigmentation, male dystrophy, developmental delay, short stature, esophageal structures, hyperhidrosis, and premalignant leukoplakia of the oral mucosa and progressive pancytopenia. And there are 14 genes are responsible for the telomere maintenance. Uh, we know that the, the, this disease is well known for very short telomere because of the abnormality in any of these uh, genes that are involved in the maintenance of the telomere. And uh, it is also associated by hepatic and pulmonary fibrosis that exist and progress with years, with or without the transplant. However, after transplant, it's likely that the progression will be uh, higher, especially if you use more intensive therapy. Neurological ophthalmic immune deficiencies are known association. Uh, the conservative therapy used to be androgens to improve the marrow function. However, stem cell transplantation is the only potential cure for dyskeratosis congenita. You need to monitor these patients and check them before transplant carefully for pulmonary fibrosis and hepatic fibrosis. AV malformation in the lung, liver, and uh, GI. Uh, complication, uh, well-known neoplastic complication, increased malignancy, squamous cell carcinoma of skin, nasopharynx, esophagus, uh, etc. Pulmonary complication, fibrosis, abnormality in the microvascular uh, system, and uh, it's really becoming a challenge to transplant, especially if the uh, developed, uh, you know, complication in that regards, it can be a, a, a leading cause of death. Uh, the bone marrow uh, manifestation, the hematological manifestation, usually occur in the second decade of life, and uh, this is the start of the problems uh, and and the evolution to cancer. And uh, you know, the aplastic uh, anemia is. Uh, usually diagnosed or the hematologic manifestation starts probably at the age of four, but it can present more or less later, around the age of 15. Uh, natural history of the dyskeratosis congenita, many times it is underdiagnosed or usually diagnosed late. 86% uh, of the affected are male. Uh, as I mentioned, the mucocutaneous feature features may develop uh, between the age of five and 15 years and the peripheral cytopenia is around the age of 10. Uh, progressive fibrosis of the liver and lung and the AV malformation is expected. The experience in stem cell transplant, uh, transplantation of dyskeratosis congenita is not encouraging the experience of EBMT uh, in 94 patients, and these are, uh, you know, uh, data mostly after, the, uh, after 2000 in 84%. Uh, all patients, of course, receive direct because these patients do not tolerate uh, uh, regular doses of chemotherapy. Unfortunately, despite the engraftment, but as you follow these patients, 
the uh, ongoing uh, fibrosis and uh, tissue da tissue uh, damage uh, continues. And these the, the some the transplant actually enhance or may expedite the development of these complications. As you can see, as you follow these patients, they they, they uh, deteriorate and they die. Uh, the, the Brazilian experience is more or less similar to the European experience in 29 uh, patients. Uh, as you can see, the, they have uh, similar with overall survival 62, but as you follow these patients, we expect them to do poorly. The, uh, the, the poor outcome was noticed in the mismatch transplant. There are only two out of eight who are alive. And post-transplant, the venoclusive disease of the liver, GI tract bleeding, and hepatopulmonary uh, syndrome was the major cause of uh, death. Out of five, only one was alive. Pulmonary fibrosis occurred in two. As you can see, they're quite common, and you need to look for them. And even post-transplant, as you follow them in the clinic, you need to have a good uh, you know, follow-up of these patients and may refer them to uh, GI and pulmonology service. A, a good a good study actually it's a clinical trial ongoing tra clinical trial by Sangeet uh, Sunit Agrawal uh, incorporating alemtizumab, uh, fludarabine, and uh, bone marrow graft uh, was used in 20 patients and uh, so far that looks like the results are encouraging and the, the, the curve is going uh, quite uh, satisfactory compared with the, the uh, you know, the uh, CIBMTR experience. So we're waiting for the final report to come in this uh, regimen. Uh, we go now to diamond black fan anemia, and it's a disease uh, that is uh, characterized by um, <clears throat> macrocytic uh, anemia, reticulocytopenia, and uh, physical anomalies that really involve uh, the face. Uh, as you can see, the eyes, the uh, chin, their congenital anomalies, and increased predisposition to cancer. Uh, mutation uh, are recognized in 20 RPS genes in diamond black fan. The RPS 19 constitutes the larger portion of them. <coughs> Uh, these patients typically uh, present uh, early in uh, the first year of life, almost 90% of them. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, you need to monitor these patients. And, and usually, as I mentioned earlier, they're managed with uh, steroids and blood transfusion. And, uh, you know, the, when, when the steroids become ineffective or they develop toxicity to steroids, or they, the only way to manage them is through chronic transfusion, then you consider them for uh, stem cell transplantation, especially if your steroid dose is still significant. Uh, you need to observe like the other bone marrow failure for aplasia, dysplasia, and malignancy. The outcome of stem cell transplantation is excellent, actually. In the German-French group, there are 70 patients, uh, mostly the pediatric age group, a median of five years, the survival was excellent using matched uh, sibling donor or matched unrelated. It's almost 100%. Similar uh, thing was seen in Brazilian group uh, that think that uh, you know treated 44. Mind you, here they used combination of patients with uh, unrelated cord transplant, mud mismatch, and haplo. Uh, so so they have uh, you know some patients who did not do, do well, but uh, invariably patients who are treated with uh, busulfan, fludarabine, or busulfan, triusulfan, fludarabine, ATG uh, combination, they have the best outcome, uh, especially those with MRD and uh, MUD. Uh, we go to uh, severe congenital neutropenia, and we know that the neutropenia, congenital neutropenia, is uh, uh, a congenital disease uh, known to have recurrent infections and severe neutropenia with neutrophils less than 500 or less than 200. And, uh, you know, uh, they have characteristic ab abnormality in the bone marrow with maturation at rest. Uh, there are different genes uh, described in, in, in this category, especially Elaine mutation that encompasses the bulk of the gene abnormality and it is more dominant. However, other genes were described. HAX1, we've seen it in several patients in our uh, hospital. 
and it's photosomal recessive, and they have progressive neurological changes and developmental delay. Others are associated with cardiac defects and thrombocytopenia, etc. Um, as you can see, the distribution of the genetic abnormalities here. Uh, as I mentioned uh, before, it's characterized by recurrent infection. Patients will have uh, really uh, uh, failure to thrive, recurrent, uh, you know, di diarrhea and deep-seated infections, and they have predisposition to uh, hematological malignancy. Um, the indication for transplant for severe congenital neutropenia, lack of response to high doses of GCS. Usually, the average dose is, is, is 5 mics per kilo per day, is uh, up to 10 mics per, per day, provided you have adequate, uh, you know, response is fine, but you reach more than 20 or 50 with the presence of clonal, uh, with, uh, clonal evolution or mutation, uh, that is an indication to, to move to transplant. Outcome is best in young children, uh, mud uh, or match unrelated, and you need uh, myeloablative conditioning. As you can see, the outcome uh, has been uh, excellent. The mismatch, however, did, uh, did poorly. Schwachmann diamond is the other side of congenital neutropenia characterized by progressive bomarrow failure. They have exocrine pancreatic dysfunction, malabsorption, skeletal abnormalities, and failure to thrive. <clears throat> they are highly predisposed to hematological uh, malignancies, and uh, these patients, uh, if they present with severe pancytopenia or neutropenia, they are candidate for transplant, definitely when they have clonal evolution, but they are also, uh, it's, it's up to 25% they may develop it. The outcome after myeloablative conditioning, 70% five-year-old overall survival. However, if they develop, uh, uh, if they develop uh, MDS or AML, the outcome is poor, as you can see in this uh, curve. Development of myeloid malignancy, uh, you know, in most of the uh, severe congenital neutropenia, uh, they, they, you expect that these patients may develop, uh, you know, uh, malignancy, especially monosomy 7, trisomy 13. Schwachmann diamond syndrome, similarly high rate of, uh, you know, transformation to AML, and uh, the majority will may have the TAP53 mutation and may have monosomy uh, 7. Uh, these are the uh, the outcome and and the EBMT in patients with uh, you know uh, severe congenital neutropenia. The uh, patients uh, transplanted without malignancy. The outcome is 87 and 78 here. Uh, again, it's relatively uh, good when they in the early transformation to malignancy. However, in the diamond in the Schwachmann diamond syndrome, 72 and 71, and poor outcome once they transfer to malignancy. Uh, and before I end, this is uh, the the uh, the outcome in uh, rare uh, you know diseases such as megakaryocytic thrombocytopenia. The as you can see, they're using uh, myeloablative conditioning, uh, you know, mud or match related donor. The outcome is 76 percent. The uh, CATA, uh, GATA2, and this is again, I mean, uh, critical and important, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, transcription factor for the maintenance in, in immune and hematological uh, tissue, and uh, the outcome of it is is seventy five percent. MECOM is a new syndrome is characterized by, um, again, you know, bomber failure, thrombocytopenia cardiac, renal, uh, deafness, and uh, skeleton, upper limbs uh, abnormality, and the, uh, the outcome here is, is actually three patients died, so it's not, the outcome has not been encouraging. In SAMD9 and SAMD uh, L, uh, again, these patients manifest with myelodysplasia and bone marrow failure, and Mirage syndrome, which is a constellation of physical abnormalities, there are here 12 uh, patients which are transplanted, most of them myeloablative uh, syndrome. And mind you, these diseases are new and they are being explored. What is the best conditioning? What is the natural history of these diseases? And uh, what is the, uh, uh, the outcome of, of these patients? And it looks like there are 10 patients alive after 
uh, myeloablative conditioning in these diseases. So the, in summary, uh, the special consideration uh, for transplant in inherited bone marrow failure, uh, you need to early recognize these patients and you need to do accurate diagnosis, molecular diagnosis are needed. And especially if you have to take special tissues to make the diagnosis, because invariably in the pediatric age group, many of the new described, uh, uh, you know, genetic mutation are missed because of uh, lack of the proper tissue uh, diagnosis. This is done in the patient as well in the potential donors. Proper screening, you have to monitor these patients, study the bone marrow and blood carefully for, you know, uh, mutation displays there and cytogenetic abnormalities and moleculars. Uh, the best source of stem cell is the bone marrow. The best donor uh, is uh, from HLA match sibling or related donor. Alternative donor match unrelated donor, haploidentical, can be offered to these patients. The use of alpha-beta uh, T-cell depletion marrow or T-cell repeat haplo transplant may offer good alternative to match-related donor. Flodarabine-based conditioning is promising. It's actually showed uh, significant improvement in the outcome compared to the past and reduced the, uh, the transplant-related toxicities from the previous conditioning uh, uh, chemotherapies. Inherited bone marrow failure diseases are still underdiagnosed. There is a need to improve the diagnostic methods and tissue sampling, and there's a need to understand the disease behavior as well. Um, lifelong follow-up in these patients are as needed, and proper screening for cancer and organ dysfunction, especially in patients that are like Fanconi or uh, dyskeratosis and genita to monitor for liver, uh, lung, and uh, GI is very important. And with that, I'll, I'll conclude my uh, talk. Thank you.